there's definitely like room for another like spin-off I guess but I don't want it but it could happen It's your girl Jay and today I'm here with part two of my April wrap-up for 2020. I'm filming this on April 24th and on this date I have read 26 books this month. I am definitely going to be reading more since there are six more days. I'll just end up adding them on to my May wrap-up or like I'll just make a random wrap-up video in the middle of the month because 26 is a lot to talk about. So these are the next nine that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. Wow. The first book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up I really did not like. It is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kristen White. I gave this a two out of five stars. This is a retelling of Frankenstein, which follows Elizabeth. At a very young age, Elizabeth is gifted to the eldest son of the Frankenstein Manor. Victor is known for his violent outbursts. The only person who seems to be able to calm him down is Elizabeth. Victor is away at university and Elizabeth hasn't heard from him for months, so she becomes a little bit worried about her place in the Frankenstein household. So she decides that she's going to go and bring him home with the help of her good friend Justine. I found this book to be incredibly boring and slow. I did not care about any of the characters. I could not connect to any of them. I did like the friendship between Elizabeth Justine and Mary though. That was probably the highlight of the book. I also actually did enjoy the complex relationship between Elizabeth and Victor. It's a very interdependent relationship and extremely toxic which was really interesting to read but I will say that the ending was way too fast for how slow the rest of the book was. It just was really weird and I did not enjoy it so two out of five. The next book I read was Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Nora Walker who everyone in town believes to be a witch and that her family has a special connection to the Wicker Woods. One night while wandering through these woods, Nora discovers a boy who has been missing for two weeks. Upon spending more time with him, she starts to discover secrets that he's been hiding along with some little tidbits of information that he is just beginning to remember about the night he disappeared and it's like the story of that. I was really excited to pick this one up because I was such a huge fan of Shay's debut novel, The Wicked Deep. And the writing in this is very similar, which I loved in The Wicked Deep and I loved in this one as well. The writing style is very spooky and atmospheric. I didn't enjoy the repetition in the book, but now that I finish it, I understand why the author chose to write the book that way. I just didn't like it, but it made sense. I also found it to be very predictable. I was able to call pretty much all of the book, but I still had a good time reading it, so 3.5 out of 5. The next two books are part of a series, so I'm going to talk about them together. It is Sleeping Giants and Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouvelle. These are part of the Famous Files trilogy. I think that's how you say it. Not sure. I gave both of these a 4 out of 5 stars. The book basically follows a team of scientists who are investigating the science behind a giant robotic arm that this young girl named Rosie fell on top of while biking one day. 17 years later she becomes a physicist and then ends up being tasked with discovering more about this artifact that she fell onto when she was younger. It sounds really weird and it's kind of hard to explain without like giving things away, but it is such an intriguing story. It's really cool because it's told in interview format as well as journal entries. I listened to it on an audiobook. It's a full cast audio, which I think really enhanced the story for me. I really liked hearing how the characters interacted with one another. I also found it really interesting that the interviewer is not named in the first book, like he completely remains a mystery. The story is so fast paced, you really need to pay attention to what's going on or you'll miss little tidbits of information. But it was so interesting to learn more about these robots and why they were on Earth. I've heard that the story kind of goes downhill in book three, so I don't actually own it, so I don't really have a rush to get into it. But I did really like the first two books in the series, so four out of five for both of them. The next three books that I have are also part of a series. They are the Rebel Bell series by Rachel Hawkins. The first one is 
Rebel Bell. Second is Miss Mayhem. Third is Lady Renegades. I gave the first one four out of five. The last two, three out of five. I'm just gonna give a synopsis for the first book so that I don't give anything else away, but the first book follows Harper Price, who is like this debutante. She's about to be crowned homecoming queen, but she has to take a quick trip to the bathroom, which ends up turning deadly, and she finds herself with these special powers. She quickly discovers that she is now something called a paladin, and she has been tasked with protecting her arch nemesis, David Stark. As she learns more about her new role in life, she starts spending more time with David, starts having feelings for him, which makes things a little bit more complicated and it's like the story of that. First book was a grand old time. This whole series just went downhill from there. I was not the biggest fan of Harper in the first book. She definitely has a lot of character development as the series progresses, which was nice to see, but I also was not a fan of David in the first book. I really didn't like him, but then he grew on me again as the series progressed, and then I really didn't like him in the third book, but if you read the series, like, that's what's supposed to happen, so... I actually ended up reading this entire series in one sitting because I was so invested in the characters and their story and the plot. I actually found the plot to be really interesting. I thought it was going to be a very contemporary-esque book because of the covers, like they just look like your typical contemporary book, but I was actually pleasantly surprised, at least with the first one. It was a lot more action-packed than I thought it would be. The first book ends on this giant cliffhanger, so I immediately picked up the second book because I needed to know what was happening with these characters. I will say by the second and third books, I did not care that much about them anymore. Book two was definitely a filler book, like it was not needed in the series, and book three, like it was a fun time and it wrapped the story up nicely, but again, like the Rebel Bell could have been a standalone novel and it would have been fine. I do think that the third book kind of left it open for having more books in the series. I'm not saying that that's what should happen, but there's definitely like room for another like spin-off, I guess, but I don't want it, but it could happen. But yeah, overall Rebel Bell A+, the other two not so great. Next book I have is The Hiding Place by CJ Tudor. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Joe Thorne, who swore that he would never return to his hometown of Arnhill after the disappearance and reappearance of his little sister Annie. He ends up receiving an anonymous email that starts talking about how what happened to Annie is happening again, so he finds himself back in Arnhill. He hopes to find out what really happened to Annie all those years ago, as well as prevent that from happening again. At the beginning of the book, I was very invested in the story. The prologue really hooks you in and makes you want to keep reading, but as the story progressed, I just kind of got bored with the story and it kind of felt like it was just dragging on in the end. I will say that the ending definitely drew me back in, but the middle part of this book just dragged and dragged. I did really like Joe as a main character. I think that he was very witty and sarcastic. His inner dialogue was very funny and I enjoyed reading from his perspective. I also really liked the flashbacks to Joe's childhood where we found out more about what happened to Annie and what happened afterwards. I definitely was not expecting the paranormal twist in this so that was really enjoyable but I read CJ Tudor's first book, The Chalkman, and this kind of has similar vibes to that so if you like The Chalkman you probably will like this. But overall a quick and spooky read. So. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up, I gave a 2 out of 5 stars. It is Fire by Kristen Kishore and this was such a disappointment because I loved Graceling so so much but this one was just not for me. So this takes place in the Graceling realm but it follows a completely different character. In the land of the Dells there are monsters that are just as beautiful as they are dangerous. Fire is one of these monsters. She has the ability to read and control the minds of those around her. So when the king has an attempt on his life, she is summoned to try to figure out who is behind the attack. I did like Fire as a main character. I think that she was very feisty and she definitely stood up for what she believed in. I really liked learning more about her backstory and her relationship with her father. That was probably the only part of the story that I actually found interesting. I was not a fan of Archer and how he thought that he had a claim on Fire. Like, they didn't have a relationship so he just needed to, like, 
fuck off and stop talking. I also was not the biggest fan of the amount of times that people wanted to rape fire was mentioned. Like it was like every other page was talking about how beautiful fire was and therefore all men wanted to rape her. Like it was just weird. I was also not the biggest fan of the amount of times her period was mentioned and how that caused the raptors to want to kill her because she was bleeding from her vagina as well as that made m more men want to rape her. Like what is the fascination with rape and this author? I was just- I didn't like it. I also just think that this book was super slow. Like it is a chonker of a book and not that much happened honestly. Like I was bored through most of the book. I think I just wanted to like it because I loved Graceling so much but this one just was not for me. I am intrigued to see what I think of Bitter Blue because that actually does follow the characters of Graceling I believe so I'll be happier in that story because it's like actually still that story but yeah, two out of five stars. All right, everybody, so that was my part two of my April wrap-up for 2020. I read a shit ton of books. Part three will be up sometime soon, and if I end up reading more than 26 books, another wrap-up will be sometime in May. Who really knows with me? Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!